Ladies and gentlemen, my name is The Reckonist and welcome to the start of a new vlog series where I'll be documenting my experiences post-bariatric surgery. Uh, I am currently eight days post-surgery and I'm going to be documenting today the process from pre-surgery, surgery, the hospital and coming back home and uh, seeing the doctor, which was yesterday. Uh, it's also worth pointing out, despite me sounding like uh, a bit part character of House Stark, I'm actually in the United States of America. Uh, this was done through the American healthcare system, although you know the NHS does have a similar thing, um, where it's in order to qualify for the surgery, you'll have to jump through some, some hoops first to show that you're actually uh, trying to lose weight another way. Um, so the only difference is you have to pay for <laughs> you have to pay for insurance in America as you don't in United Kingdom. But pretty much the same thing. This is a bariatric sleeve surgery, and uh, yeah, let's talk about it now. So a couple of days before the surgery, I had to switch to an all liquid diet, which was protein shakes and and water, no carbonation. Or caffeine either. So for two days, it was it it sucked pretty much because I, I had a full stomach. I had a big stomach, but I didn't have um, anything in it. So the forty eight hours, the the hunger pains really kind of kicked in um, about about the night before, and um, it kind of made the anxiety a little bit worse. So, but um, I, w I w obviously was a little bit anxious for the surgery, but uh, I didn't let that on to the wife. Uh, yeah, I was quite kind of nervous. But she she was like so nervous about it, and I was like, nah. to her face. <laughs> That's what I was to her face. But yeah, two days before the surgery, all liquid diet, no carbonation, no caffeine, and then before I knew it, really, the we were at the hospital checking in. So pre surgery, you had you check into uh, a little little suite of your own, I guess you'd call it. Uh, put the gown on and stuff. They made me wash with antibacterial stuff, their own stuff. Oh yeah, the night before I also had a uh, anti blood clotting pill, which was isn't covered by a lot of insurances in America apparently. And if I was to buy it out of pocket, it could go up to three hundred dollars for one pill, which might help prevent blood clots. So yeah, that's something to to keep in mind as well. Um, the if you don't have insurance. This is a fifty thousand dollar operation. I, I asked, um, so yeah, long live the NHS. So day of the surgery, I had to wash. I had like iodine put up my nose and things. Um, I had to brush my teeth with a special thing. And more embarrassingly, they nobody told me about this. The nurse had to shave my belly, just the belly. <laughs> My hairy belly, but not my hairy chest. It looks ridiculous. Uh, but then I thought about it would. Would it be look weird, weirder the other way around? It probably would. Just having a hairy belly and a hairless chest. Yeah, it probably would. So yeah, that happened. So if you're going into the surgery and you're a guy, prepare for that. Um, surgery went, um, was a little bit late. Apparently the surgeon was, uh, in stuck in traffic, but he was there close enough, um, to the time, I wheeled into the anesthesia. I've got a tale to tell here. Actually, I let slip to the anesthesiologist. That's what they call them. Not anesthetist. Um, that I hate anesthetist and anesthesiologist because they've always tricked me when I've been put under before. I've been put under for three operations before. One of them was life-saving, um, which was my appendix. And I let it slip while I was maybe sort of doped up a little bit. It must have done. And I let slip that I hated him. And apparently it sent the room into raptures because it doesn't... Basically, I reckon everyone else in the room hated the anesthesiologist as well. So, um, yeah, that happened. They all thought it was funny. They said, okay, we're going to put you to sleep now. And I went, can I count to 10? And they went, okay, uh, you can do that. Can I do it in Spanish for some reason, I asked. And... <laughs> They went, if you can. And then I went, uno, out. That was it. That was it. Out. Out solid. Uh, woke up in recovery. Groggy as hell in a little bit of discomfort and pain. I had a nurse over me. So, uh, pretty much my own personal nurse for this, which was great. Um, saying that I was out of the surgery now. Everything seems to have gone fine. And you're just going to main hit, be here for to maintain and to, just to look at my stats and things like that. And uh, on either side of me, I th in the beds either side of me, in the recovery room, I think 
children were born. <laughs> um, it seems that I asked this yesterday when I went to the doctor. Apparently, there was a lot of C-sections that very morning. Um, so, yeah, I was in a room surrounded by newborn screaming children, which was not disorientating at all all. Anyway, next news, I was in my recovery room, unlike in the UK, um, where I've had surgeries and I've been, you, you put on wards, especially at Stepping Hill Hospital where I was. Um, you were put on a ward and a nurse would periodically look in on you. But I had my own private room and that private room had its own private bathroom, television access to the internet, all sorts of things. It was, say this about the American healthcare system, it certainly feels more personal. Um, I have my, it was all private. It was great, but I didn't really care about that at that point because I was in a little bit of agony because this is where the sort of complication came through. Uh, my complication was I had stomach cramps. These were unpredictable and uncontrollable. And on an area where you've just had surgery, they put me through it's absolute agony. It was terrible. And it took about 24 hours for people to, for A, me to figure out this wasn't expected, and B, for people to actually, the, the medical staff to actually address it. Um, it was addressed with muscle relaxers, which I still have now and I'm still taking. Uh, and I'm still occasionally having cramps, although thank, thank whoever that it is actually going down in pain. So that was the main thing. Uh, wife was by my side pretty much the whole time, um, which was obviously very nice. Um, yeah, so the first 24 hours was me getting up for walks, apparently, because yeah, you're going to like this. The surgery itself, they slightly tilt you upside down a bit and then pump your your whole abdomen full of air so they can see everything clearly. Makes sense, right? So the first 24, 48 hours, you have to walk around because that air doesn't go anywhere unless you make it. So you have to, I had to walk around the floor like four or five times. Apparently, people are supposed to do like four in a day, and I was doing like eight, ten laps a day in the first day, and the nurses kind of noticed that I wasn't having, I wasn't having the same problems everyone else has that wasn't expected. Uh, I didn't really feel any pain apart from when the cramps happened. I wasn't in much pain at all. I had no trouble drinking, which was obviously, if you're having stomach surgery, uh, drink being able to take your fluids is uh, an important thing. And then, um, yeah, so the first day was me walking around and trying to drink. I didn't quite hit my um, quota for drinking. I think something like half a liter for the first day or something like that. Um, so I had to spend another night in the hospital, which again is ex kind of expected. Um, and the second day I woke up uh, in agony. This was when we started to address the cramping when we realized it was a huge problem because that night I was not comfortable at all. I was groggy. I felt hungover, um, nauseous, all sorts of things like that. And then when the surgeon came in, another surgeon came in to ask how I was. I told him this. He went, hmm, okay. Um, next news, the nurses came in with some heavy anti-nausea meds and some heavy muscle relaxers. And then an hour later, not a problem. There was, there was, the cramps were still happening, but they weren't hurting. And I wasn't nauseous anymore. I was able to drink a lot more um, and eat jello or jelly. I was able to eat things. So basically, I, I turned the corner and I was released in the afternoon of the second day, uh, which was nice. Um, getting home, I had a choice. I could either veg myself on the sofa forever or veg myself in the bedroom forever. I chose the bedroom uh, because we have a nice little patio door. It's a, lot, a natural light. Plus, uh, it's higher than the sofa, of course, and getting in and out. And we have our own uh, ensuite in the bedroom as well, which is very nice as well. Um, the second day was mainly me coming to terms with that uh, I had surgery, my body coming to terms with it. Um, and with the muscle relaxers, I was able to sleep and sleep a lot. I did that first day. Um, I also drank and I met my drinking goal. Hooray. Um, and that was the return home, really. Every day I increased more, li more fluids. Um, I was able to eat more jello and jelly and things like that. Protein shakes, of course. There is a minimum, of course, that you have to try and meet post-surgery. 
In order not to go to the hospital, you have to have a minimum of 40 grams of protein per day. You can get that any way you, any way you can, really, uh, but preferably not solids, which is why um, my favorite way is muscle milk. See this muscle milk here, 25 grams of protein. There's also a Premier protein, which is a, we got it from Costco, I think it's 30 grams. Both good. Um, also, the wife being the wife made some protein jellies. <laughs> There's about 10 grams of protein in here. It's like, cool. So yeah, um, that was how I met my protein goal. As for the water, I've not had any problems meeting my water goal at all like since the surgery. Um, so that's going really well. The only major issue I had was getting rid of these stomach cramps, which, as I say, is a complication. It can come from anywhere and, you know, I'm really happy that that's got sorted because I, other than that, I don't have any problems. The only problem is the occasional crippling, debilitating pain. <laughs> and it goes three, four seconds later, just like, just like cramp in your, in your calf. Nothing. It's just gone. Um, so as the days went on, um, yesterday, which was a, a week post-surgery, we went to the doctor for a checkup. They checked my incisions. In incidentally, the incisions, by the way, we have five. I have five tiny incisions in my, in my stomach. One of them is quite big. It's about that big. It's where they put a camera in. And the rest of it is done through tools inserted into different areas. And essentially, they cut a big part of your stomach out and staple it up again, which is where the sleeve comes from. Instead of a big, it's just like a line. Uh, so my stomach is tiny. Um, I'm still only able to eat liquids currently. And after a while, once the... Uh, once the well, they staple it back together again. Once that's healed sufficiently, I can have. Um, I think probably, probably to, I think it's tomorrow. I have an appointment with a dietitian to talk about what I can and can't eat. And since I'm doing so well, I think I can move on to the next week's uh, plans. There um, was there anything else I wanted to cover before we did this? Yeah, the doctors were amazed uh, that I didn't have any of the problems expected. Um, problems with people I've spoken to, they had just never materialized. The only one was the, the the cramps, and that's gone now. It's under control. I am currently on a lot of meds, though, which I have to take for quite a while. I have one for nausea, or two for nausea, um, one for like acid reflux. Um, there's painkillers if i need them i have some opiates I've, I've only had one of the like the 10 hours of this done that was the first day we came back uh muscle relaxers uh all sorts of things about eight medications i'm gonna have to take for a little while um but, but pretty soon i'll be on solid foods now and i, and I don't want to read too much into this but now eight days after the surgery i weighed myself uh, about half an hour ago I'm 24 pounds down. <laughs> 24 pounds. I know I know a stomach's big, but it's not 24 pounds, right? So it's a good start. A very good start. Um, I'm obviously optimistic about how this is going to go in the future. Um, I think even this early on, I don't have any regrets about this. I think this was a good decision because if anyone watched the other video, the main takeaway of it was I'm not 19 anymore. I'm not very fit anymore and I don't want to die. And I think this surgery will address all of those things, certainly in the coming months and years. Um, obviously, this was the whole point of it. So I don't die. Um, and I'm really proud of how this has gone and uh, how you know the family over here and my family in England have, have taken to this news because I kind of kept, kept it a secret from everyone in England <laughs> until the, like, the week before. But then... Um, my, my flipping mum found the first video on YouTube. What is she doing on YouTube? I don't understand. She's like 65 years old. How is she on? Ugh. I wanted to keep it a secret until the night before, but yeah, there's been no animosity. You guys have been incredibly supportive about it. Um, what I will say is to anyone who is planning the surgery or has experiences similar to mine from having it, you know, leave a comment and we can have a chat about things. Maybe I'll be able to poke you into certain things you didn't think would work, or you can inform me of things that I should be aware of going forward. But as of right now, this has gone very well. Um, I'm really excited. I feel great. I seem to have a bit of color back. I was yellow for a couple of days, um, sort of slightly jaundiced. Um, but yeah, this has been the first vlog. It's going to be a lot longer than the rest of them, the updates. 
Um, but yeah, eight days in, 24 pounds lost, and I'm coping with the behavioral changes I've had to make towards food because bored eating is the problem. Uh, as it always has been, and especially being stationary and working behind a desk for the last couple of years really has affected my health. Um, but I'm optimistic for the future. This has gone much better than I thought it would, uh, and much better than everyone thought it would, to be honest. But yeah, if you have questions, comments, observations, if you like this video, click like. If you dislike it, click dislike. Obviously, subscribe, links of social media if you want to get in touch with me down below. But yeah, this is the first of what I suspect will be a few of these vlogs documenting my experience. And um, yeah, everybody, thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. And I will see you next time.